Welcome to the Welcome. Invest the Difference podcast. We're going to talk about how to grow and scale your life and business by investing in and doubling down on difference makers. So whether it's mindset growth, tactical business strategies, or identifying your unique edge, let's invest the difference and change the world. And we are back. Uh, again, we get an opportunity to do another episode with my best friend and my wife, Melissa Gambin, and we're just totally changing the subject. Today is not about business, but it's all about business. We're going to be talking through the great balancing act of life, family, business, finances. Again, I'm not saying we have all the answers here, but um, we have definitely poured a lot of time and energy into growing this aspect for us. So I don't think of a better topic to have on our Invest a Difference podcast than literally investing in the difference makers of life and family and the great balancing act that it takes to just be a good spouse and a good parent and a good business owner and a good just shepherd of your finances. And I think the greatest truth in the balancing act is there is never truly a balance. I think there is. You are always trying to realign. I'm saying there's no place you can get to that you're like, oh, I am most balanced. Definitely no. I, I've been there for like a solid couple of minutes. Yeah. Times. Yeah. Maybe three yeah. maximum. So, Melissa Side Gambin. In. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. It's a joy to spend the morning with you, having mm. a coffee without anyone asking me for anything, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> so what did Senna say? Okay, so we were talking about this podcast topic before we started recording. <laughs> what did you say specifically? You said life, finances. Family, life, finances. Family, life, finances. Um, it made me laugh because I'm sure we're going to circle back around to this, but this is just you know typical me right into the deep end. This morning, I'm buying an episode of Daniel Tiger on our Apple TV for our three-year-old. She goes, Mommy, you are such a good buyer. <laughs> and I'm like, if only your dad were here to hear this. I mean, she's not wrong. No. Well, she's not wrong. I wouldn't but say you're a good buyer. No? No, you're a good no. shopper. Isn't that the same? No, a good buyer like finds coupons. Oh, I disagree. Discounts. Oh, see, this 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 might be it right here where we could mend all discrepancies in highly finances. Unlike, highly unlikely. Probably not. Yeah. But I, you know what's funny is I literally think of that as completely different things. A good buyer, in my opinion, would be someone that finds really unique, high quality products. Hmm. You're that's really, you're a really good of. buyer. I'm a really <laughs> good buyer. Yeah. Um, that's so interesting. So yeah. you're like, I want Amazon plus the five percent off coupon, and I'm like, let's find the most expensive, unique, expensive boutique item that no one else can get. That just because it's expensive doesn't make it good. True, but if it's unique and cool, that does make it good. Hmm. Well, that's the episode, guys. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So, um, obviously, we've been doing this for a while. Um. And I, and Those I think, that haven't listened to the previous podcast, we've been married 13 and a half years. We've been trying at this marriage thing for all those years and yeah. trying to come to a place where we are the best versions of ourselves and walking through this life together and kind of sifting through ourselves in the choice to be together and be married and try to do it as well as we can. And in there, like the Great Balancing Act, like- yeah. There's seasons where it's easier. There's seasons where it's harder mm -hmm. for a lot of like different just pressures that come along with it. And I, I'll never forget kind of reading a, about this. And I don't remember the exact book. I wish I did. But I remember reading that there are seasons where you get to be a better business owner. Mm -hmm. And then there's seasons where you, you get to be a better spouse. spouse or a better father Right, like, and um, I've truly embraced that because I think a lot of people uh, use the the parameter of time mm -hmm. incorrectly when it comes to balancing. Yeah, like right? they like, want to give the same amount of time to everything. Right, like you you can't find balance in a day, mm -hmm. gener like, and for a constant period of time. Correct. But you can find balance in a decade. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So, like, um, I wish. No, I'm glad I did not know this, 
when we first started having kids. Mm. Because if I would have known that having kids would have been a decade long thing, I probably wouldn't have started. Like literally having all of our children. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like yeah. it's been like a, it's been like a decade long process. Well, Coco's six and a half. So it's six and a half years. Yeah. But by the time we're, <laughs> by, by the time we're done, right? I know. You want another one? And, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. But like by the time we're done, it'll be 10 years. You know, we're seven years in. So yeah you know i yeah. see the light at the end of the tunnel that's not a train right <laughs> um so it's it's like okay I, if i would have known that but like that's where the balancing act comes like if you're having if you're in that season of life you can balance that season of life or something but like mm-hmm. maybe when you're in your for us we're in our 30s mm-hmm. melissa's in her mid 30s oh my, my gosh mid-30s. i just turned 35 <laughs> so and she's it feels, officially downhill from there it's not actually a pain point but there's something about it that feels a little bit like a pain point yeah because you get old oh man you look good but you get old oh my gosh uh, so kind <laughs> um overall though um the the idea of balancing gets really distorted when you shorten a time frame. Mm-hmm. Like any one given year, yeah, right. You can get close to finding some balance, but but nothing will be fifty fifty. Mm-hmm. I think it's a it's a complete uh, like lack. You're not going to hit that target. It will not be fifty fifty. Yeah, but you just have to understand what is going to require more of you. Totally, and then understand mm-hmm. that like if you are taking sixty percent into business and forty percent into home. At some point, that 10% will have to get paid back. It's so tricky, too, because, like, you never know what things are really going to take because life requires people and relationships. And I know you've heard it before, but the whole idea of attunement with kids or with people and with relationships, you know, they need attunement and they need um, someone to identify if they're having a bad – like, I'm thinking of the children, for example – the baby of weirdest of all, you know, we just spent um, some time away together. We were away for about four days as a family and it was super odd, but I felt really disconnected from our nine-month-old and I, I felt like she felt disconnected and it's taken all of five days to really feel reconnected to her. And so my point is with that is that, you know, whether it's your kid or it's your spouse or or even your business because your business is the people that it makes up, whether that be clients or coworkers, you never know what it's going to take. So I feel like that's a job in of itself is having to attune to your priorities, let them be multiple, work, home, spouse, you know, whatever it is, friendships, you having to constantly check in and attune and then adjust your schedule based on what's needed. It's a really tricky thing. Yeah, but I think that's a really great point to make because you have to be present. You got to be present. You've yeah. got to be. You've got to sh- like show up and be where your feet are, as my good friend Ben Newman says. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, because if you're not trying, you know, if you, if you're numbing through whatever numbing choice you used to numb through, yeah. and like o- overworking <laughs> is numbing, in my yeah. opinion. You know, like not working enough is numbing in my opinion. So like if you're not being present and really sh- like seeing what's happening, I think you're missing the ability to find out where you can really tune in. Yeah. Same thing shows up at work. Like I've got some employees now that I really really care about that at times I notice like they need more of me, they mm-hmm. need, you know, some need less of me, so like I can pour more into one department over mm-hmm. another. Um so it's just about kind of showing up. But I truly do believe that like uh, the the cost of not paying attention is significant, right? Oh, so, absolutely. So like I think through like if we fast forward our life, right? And I spend a majority of my time focusing on my business, mm-hmm. right? And our business thrives. Mm-hmm. And it hits every single one of those financial markers, but I neglect our kids. Yeah. Eventually, I'm going to have to take money out of my business to try and reconnect with my kids. Absolutely. Right? Similarly though, if I go the opposite and I don't really pour into the business and I pour in 100% of my kids, eventually I'm going to have to take time away from my kids. Yeah. To go get, go back to work. Yeah. Right? So I think it's a, it's a great balancing act that is really difficult to really manage as but as long as you have the right time frame in place. Like this decade for us is all about having kids. Mm-hmm. So I know it's going to require less sleep i know it's going to require more input more support Mm -hmm. but like it's also like this decade is the decade that i get 
to really cause raise our kids. Because like next decade, Coco may not want to spend time with me. Oh, this is so on my heart right now. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so like you may say, you know what? I'm going to take this decade and I'm going to go build my business. And then when I have this point, then mm-hmm. I'm going to go spend time with my kids. Yeah. Well, what if? They might not want. They, not don't, they, they don't want that. Or same thing with your spouse. Like we yeah. talked in the last episode about the paths. Yeah. Like you may pour a ton of into your spouse and they let the business, but then you're not really like supporting your family and really building like a yeah. life for you guys. But similarly, on the other end, you put too much into the business and one day you wake up and your spouse is a stranger. This sounds like a dark road, Claudio. The more I you're speaking, I'm like, talking about is there it a way out? No one no. talks about it. Like at the end of the day, like all you see on social media is the romanticization of Hustle 365. Correct, yeah. Right, like there's no input or pouring into like, hey, yeah, it's awesome to go be worth $100 million, but like can you also raise a family in the process? I wonder if the studies are out there and, and not that – money is this the metric because I don't think it is. I think there's a lot of really wealthy people out there that are miserable, um, whether they're choosing to admit it or not. Mm-hmm. But there's got to be some correlation to those that that choose to pour into family or or stay married or connect with their kids that are actually, you know, over multiple metrics, not just money happier in life and thriving more in life because, you know, we joke about it and (laughs) I hope it always stays a joke, but like I'm going to choose to be away from the business and pour into my family because a divorce is a lot more expensive. You know what I mean? Like there's always that joke floating around. Um, But truly, like there's got to be something to it or or I mean, I can't financially, maybe not. I don't know. Well, that's why I joined – that front row desk. Yeah, absolutely. Right? So like I think there's a lot of like masterminds and coaching programs and courses out there that really help you build a business. Yeah. Whatever industry you're in, I'm sure there's like 16 different kinds of masterminds you can join. But no one ever builds a mastermind around like actually just being a good person. Yeah. Right? And, and I truly do believe that that is one of like the secrets of success. Yeah. It's like you, if you can be a really great person. person like yeah. a good person of character, like everything else should take care of itself. So yeah. this mastermind that I just recently joined, I'm excited to go on my first retreat with them in May. It's called Front Row Dads, and it's all about being a really great husband and father. Yeah. Like they actually prohibit business talk hmm. because as a as a male that runs a business that supports my wife who stays at home with her parents mm-hmm. or stays home with the kids, <laughs> like when someone asks me what I do mm-hmm. for a living – I've never answered with, I'm a dad. Mm. I've never answered with, I'm a husband. Yeah. I've always answered with what my professional occupation is because of that's how like our values are really built around. That's how society is structured, yeah. which that's just a layered conversation as it is. But that's the conversation today is like, I'm yeah. going to, uh, the same way I'm going to invest in growing my business, I'm going to go invest in growing myself as a husband mm-hmm. and as a father so that I can show up. In the best possible way. Absolutely. Right? But that, I think that's huge. I mean, talk about Instagram things we've seen lately. There's that that one floating around right now that says, um, keep in mind that, that every day your kids are learning how to be a person from you, that they don't know how to be a person and they're looking to you to do that. So as someone that is saying, I'm just going to go try to be the best version of myself in all these categories that I've chosen to sign up for, that's huge. So what are we doing like as a family? Let's let's talk about like – Yeah. Because I'm not saying we got it right. I'm just saying that – We're like, trying our best we're, here. We're really trying our best. <laughs> but like I think our audience is also like made up of people who maybe don't have kids yet. Yeah. Or maybe they're expecting their first kid. Yeah. Or maybe they're, they're working a full-time job and they're considering starting a business. Mm-hmm. Right? Like – what what are some of the tools that we've learned over the last 14 years of marriage through countless hours of therapy, mm-hmm. you know, three kids, countless hours of no sleep, <laughs> you know, like. I feel like one of the first things that comes to mind for me is like we were not meant to live in fear. So like as I think of someone that is going towards having their first child or they're going towards wanting to become an entrepreneur or they're going towards wanting to do things differently than they're currently in, if that is already speaking to your heart, is already speaking to your spirit as something that you should go into, 
it's not going to feel less scary five years from now. So I do think there's wisdom in being methodical about how you do things, but if that's a calling that's on your life or it's something happening if your spouse is pregnant or you're pregnant, whatever is happening, um, I think that you need to go into that with a boldness and at peace and also to feel things that that are less heavy. I And I don't like the phrase that say don't take life too seriously because that sounds so like – beach bum, whatever, just go with the flow dude kind of thing. And like I don't think that's the mentality we should be in. But I also don't think things should be so heavy because at least for me personally, I I believe that that God has a plan for our life and that there is a – that there's a plan and that to a certain extent what we're doing in life is only going to influence so much – and that we're kind of held. And so I think that you need to walk through life with less fear. I guess that's my whole point. That we're not meant to walk into it with this weird fear. Yeah, but that it's easy carries. for you to say that. Yeah. Right? Being yeah. in the position that you're in. But Correct. let's 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 rewind to November of twenty nineteen. Yes. Right. I was fearful that day. Right. But let's rewind to that. Yeah. Like what were some of the skill sets or tools that you used to navigate through that path? Oh my gosh. Or rewind yeah. to July of 2016. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, ironically, well, let's talk about those two things. July of 2016. I think it was even before that. It might have been June. Of, it was July. Okay. July of 2016. July 15th. I think it's <laughs> we got a diagnosis that I was um, eight months pregnant, seven months pregnant. And the diagnosis is not that she was pregnant. No, no, the diagnosis <laughs> I was seven, eight months pregnant, but we got a diagnosis that I had spinal cord cancer inside my spinal cord, um, and it was real bad. So basically, what I, I learned so much in that season, but anything in the spinal cord is basically brain cancer, and it was not a good situation. Um, that was a hard wall, but ironically, even though it was happening to me, I think that was har- a harder season for you to walk through. Hey, I don't really remember much of it. You're blocking it out. Yeah, for sure. You should unpack that at some point. That's why I'm going to therapy. <laughs> and then in 2019 was when you shifted from your old brokerage to your new brokerage. Um, and it was just a scary, scary time. Yeah. So basically, we had enough money lined up to like make it six <laughs> months. And we started in October. Six months from October was when COVID shut everything down. Yeah. So like it was like oh and we had a baby November nineteenth oh yeah our and second we had a brand yeah a yeah. brand new newborn so it was like a like a lot of like unknowns like hey how do we actually um, keep the doors open yeah <laughs> you know but like again like it's easy for us to say that th- today right like but yeah. what were some of the skill sets that we used I think one of the like skill sets for me that I used was the grace that like at least through that that twenty nineteen situation. The grace that I knew, you basically said, "Hey, go, go, do what you got to do." Yeah, like for you, sure. You gave me the permission to just go, go do. Yeah, which was, you know, basically a year and a half of fifteen-hour days. Yeah, and you took the brunt of the newborn. You took the brunt of Coco. You took. You basically said, "Hey, I, I got this at home. Mm-hmm. Go." Yeah. Right. And I think as the stay-at-home spouse, there is a tendency to get lost and forget your purpose and your value from that capacity in the business. But when we were on mission, which we talked about in the last podcast, like there was a very clear mission and directive and goal that we were trying to get to as a group even though – or as a team, even though my role in that was often not in the grind in the day-to-day. Yeah, but like go back to the balancing act, right? Like that was 99%. All business, 1% family. Oh, yeah. Which then allows me today, right? We've taken three family vacations this year so far, <laughs> right? But like it allows for us to shift the pendulum the other day, like to balance that. Like, yeah. okay, the first quarter of this year, I travel a lot for work. Mm-hmm. But we also took two vacations as a family. Yeah. The second quarter of this year, I don't have as much travel. But we're, and then we're going to take two vacations as a family. All I'm imagining is this conference that we had to do with Coco's school, and they're like, "She's missing too much school. You guys need to get it together." <laughs> Which is another conversation <laughs> around balancing, right? Like, um, you know, I, I think it, it comes down to just kind of a season of the life that you're in. So, yeah. not to shift gears here, but like, 
what other skill sets, like I'll, I'll jump into a couple of skill sets, right? Mm-hmm. Two things we've done religiously for a really, really long time. We we are religious about date night. Oh, yeah. That's like, like a non- Non-negotiable, non-negotiable. Wednesdays. Yeah. And, and what's really- It's funny because our community knows. Even our neighbors know. Like yeah. when we pull out, we live in a cul-de-sac and we pull out and we'll get a couple waves from everybody. Oh, it's date night. <laughs> like, yep, it's Wednesday. Yeah, but like, and the cool thing about date night that I think we've gotten right is there's no pressure. Yeah. Like it doesn't have to be this magical, grandiose, like planned out thing. It's just yeah. like sometimes we literally just go get like a sub and go get pedicures and hang out. That's your favorite date night. Ever. It is. Subway, there used me- to be a subway balls, next so. to our favorite yeah. I think I'm nail salon. Today. Yeah, it's not there anymore though. You know that. Yeah. It's the green beet now. I'm gonna have to now talk. we can have a green beet salad and get a pedicure. It's, it's just probably not, more aligned it's with just, our goals, it's anyways. Just not the same. <laughs> not the same. So yeah, so we've done Wednesday date nights. Um this year we've been really meticulous about meeting on Mondays, which we're still trying to make that a non negotiable. We've been a little shifty with that. Um, but even just even if we meet Every other week. It's like night and day, just getting on the same page about calendar, getting on the same page about budgetary things. Um, yeah. The two things that have been religious for us is date night, which is me and Melissa. And then we also do family date night, Thursdays. which is like the same idea, but like family. Like yeah. it, that, that not night is protected and sacred. And it shifts around during the week, depending yeah. on what uh, day or what's going on. Like, But like we never miss a week where we don't just go do something fun as a family. Mm-hmm. Which again, like I am at work most of the week, so I'm pouring into to the business, and then at least two nights a week, I'm pouring into my wife and I'm pouring into my family, and then we also. Oh, that's something I wanted to bring up before. It's interesting because it's like when you're trying to balance, and it feels really rigid to to budget the time and say, okay, I'm gonna do this during this time. And I remember you used to bring this up years ago, and I was like you know, that feels so inauthentic. Like I'm going to budget this time to be with my children. Like, no, you should try to tap into your children all the time. But it's true. It it really actually I think gives you more margin when you are saying, okay, these set of hours are for this and this set of hours is going to be for family, even if it's just sitting on the couch doing nothing, even if we're playing old maid at the coffee table with the kids. But I'm going to set aside this time and be intentional here and it sounds silly, but it but it really is important. It come, but it comes down to decision fatigue. Yeah. Like we all have the capacity to make decisions. Yeah. And as the day goes on, it gets lower and lower and lower. And as the week goes on, it gets lower and lower and lower. So like if you can pre-make a lot of those decisions ahead of time, mm-hmm. then it's just standard, right? Like if you have a dentist appointment, you're probably going to stick to it. What? I'm laughing because I'm thinking about – you laughing at me now? No, I'm laughing about the couples <laughs> that schedule sex. Like that's all I'm thinking about. Right yeah, now. but see, like we haven't made that decision. <laughs> but like maybe I don't know. I Mondays. Don't, I can't get there. No, no I'm not there yet. Mondays. Right, we're dang it. we're regular enough. We don't need to go there. Blow yet. Job, blow job Tuesdays. Probably gonna be a no for me. But <laughs> anyways, on our next episode, we'll talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> and we're shifting on. No, but I just, I, just, I just truly think like the more. A predetermined decisions you can schedule into your day, week, month. The better off you're. The gonna better be. off you're going to be. And one of the things that we did at the beginning of this year is we scheduled out the first six months of our life. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of good that has come from that. There's a lot of bad that's come from that. I have a FOMO, so like I'm super scared of missing out. So like I went ahead and planned like all the vacations for the rest of the year, and then Melissa's like, "Hey, but what about the things that I want to do?" And I said, "Those things don't matter." <laughs> you did not say that. I didn't say that, but I thought that would have been ill received. <laughs> um, Claudio has a tendency to he does okay. I think I said this earlier. He does everything one thousand percent, and it is the thing that I love about you, and it is also the thing that drives me crazy. Um, and it's it's too much. And I think, especially as I, since I became a mother and have have transitioned from this maiden to mother process, which is a whole different topic. Um, I desire stillness, and I desire less, and and kind of a calm, and that is not. You are a lot of the time. So I think I pull you more into that and ask for seasons of nothingness. I'm just hell bent on making memories. I know. But I believe we can make memories on like a walk around the neighborhood and finding like a cool flower or a bar owl. Well, bar, bar owl. Barn owl. Not no. barn. It's something else. I don't know. I forget. <laughs> Coco's learning about birds right now. and So switching gears again. Yep. Let's talk about money. 
Okay. Let's talk about money. So how how do you feel? Let's that? circle back to Senator Grace's comment. I'm a good buyer. No, no, legit. Like how do you I, I imagine it can be really difficult, right? So we're buying a new house mm-hmm. and I had this thought yesterday. Like I literally did everything from the beginning to the end. I did absolutely everything. And I'm like, man, if Melissa, like if I died and she had Whoa, to whoa, whoa. let's circle back on everything. Everything. I feel like that discredits me. No, no, I'm not saying it, that you didn't do anything. I just said from the mortgage process. Like oh, some, from the mortgage process. Yeah, you didn't the, say that part. Yeah, the mortgage process. Okay. I did everything from point A to point Z on the mortgage process, yeah. which is a painful process. Yes. Gosh, there's got to be a better way. Someone's got to figure that out. <laughs> Business idea. Um, but like if I didn't make it home one day and you had to go buy a house, yeah, you'd have to like figure all of that out. Not yeah, you but you know that's my way. Yeah, but not that you can't figure it yeah. out. My point is, is like, how does it feel to be the stay-at-home spouse mm-hmm. with, you know, you don't, quote, unquote, make money. Yeah. Right? I'm um, not paid for my work. You I are like not paid for your work. that way. Yep, yeah, I like that. You're not paid for your work. Okay. Uh, well, sometimes I send you, sometimes if you send me nudes, I send you. I swear you. to God, this should be, <laughs> we should edit that out. This is not funny, which is funny because I was going to bring up Brittany and Ross earlier when I was talking about, okay, hold on. We have these friends of ours, our we're, we're best friends, I would probably say, Um that are really good at leaving margin. When we were talking about margin before, I wanted to bring them up. That if there is one inspirational couple, that they are very present with their friendships, with their kids, with their spouse, with with each other. They're just they're each other's spouses. Um, they're so good about being present. They don't get distracted, and they just are able to connect, whether it's a little bit of time or a lot of time. And they – so so one of the tools that I wanted to bring up before was having good community because I think we can learn so much from each other. Something we have learned in community from them is what Claudia is bringing up. Don't bring up. them into this. No, no, no. I, I'm just saying that you you say you don't get paid for your work. So he thinks it's funny. So Claudio was traveling, and he was like, listen, if you send me – we're married. Whatever. I'm not. God blesses this. I, I believe in. I Apple just don't Pay. want someone to hack my phone now. No, that I delete them. I don't keep them. I have them on my phone. Oh, well, that's your problem. I gotta delete them. <laughs> um, she sends me nudes. No, I mean these are not like erotic. I'm not like on they what's that? Be. Wait, what's that? OnlyFans. I'm not like an OnlyFans girl. You can find her on Feet Finder. Oh my gosh, I'm not on Feet Finder. <laughs> my point is. Is and this then is I my husband? Her, he I is traveling. Her. I want him to be attracted to me. <laughs> so he will literally Apple pay me and rate the quality of the photo or the value of the photo. And you will send me an Apple money. Yeah, sometimes you get a so dollar. Sometimes you get a 20. <laughs> and also so funny. Okay, this is actually a good insight into – we're not talking about how to make marriage happy, but – I just – it's not fair for you to say that you don't get paid for your work. My point is, is just have fun together, <laughs> you know? I think that is a really good tidbit on marriage in life. Anyways. Anyways. My point in all this is like you stay at home. I am unpaid you, for my you work. You don't get paid for most of your work. <laughs> for most of my and, work. And um, well, how does that feel? Because like being a control freak type three, like I would lose it. Yeah. Well, you said earlier that one of the big things um, is when you are in your clearest mind, your healthiest self, when you are cold plunging and sauning and exercising and eating right and taking your supplements and you're doing all these things, it's easy to have a clear mindset. It's the same thing on the other end. When I'm in my clearest mind, I know – For me, my value comes from Christ. He defines who I am, and all of that is a trickle down. And I am very clear about my purpose and what I need to do in life, and I am good. When I am not sleeping and I am not clear about who I am and my purpose and all the things, I lose sight of that. And and for someone who let myself – define my worth based on how much money I was making and the applause that I got or who liked me for a lot of years, I think I think it's just a redefining process, a stripping away. But I also think that there's a lot of beauty in that. I think um, there's a book called Falling Upward by a doc- Father Richard Rohr. I say doctor, but Father Richard Rohr that talks about the dark night of the soul. And this is going a little deep, but yeah. – 
<laughs> but it it's it, a tough book to read. It is a tough book to read, but it talks about stripping away your old self and it's almost like the butterfly in the cocoon and you you start off as um as the the worm or centipede. What is it? I don't even know. Caterpillar? Caterpillar, thank you. <laughs> she skipped fourth grade, y'all. <laughs> don't even go there. This is a whole different topic. I didn't know that Alaska was connected to Canada for a long time. But I know all kinds of other things. So anyways, <laughs> but you come out of the chrysalis as this butterfly and it's such a necessary process. But I think that you'd be foolish to say that you don't backslide sometimes and kind of go back to those default processes that you're used to. And then you're like, wait, no, I can do better than this. I am – I'm new. I'm not that way anymore. And not in a shame way, but identifying old patterns. Like anger is a big one for me. When I when I default to anger – it's a, it's a trigger from or fear when I feel fear either one of those I'm saying whoa, whoa, whoa that that's that's not the path that I want to walk not walk not that fear and anger are bad in in isolation but they are kind of red lights for me to say wait I need to shift here into the better version and the better path for myself that I've chosen yeah that uh, was a long winded way of answering that question sorry yeah it's okay no I, I I get where you're coming from but I also think like healthiest and unhealthiest self and how you manage finances like one of the things you mentioned earlier is like your kids are uh, learning how to be a person from you yeah right like so if we go back to its very core principles like what do we want to teach our kids about money yes right yeah it comes down to uh, more uh, the, the more you can live in those principles mm -hmm. the easier it will be to teach them those principles absolutely right so like if we are being irresponsible and not being great stewards of our money mm -hmm. um, and, and not giving and not saving and mm -hmm. not living inside of our means. Like no matter how much you try to teach your kids, will that matter. will be passed down. Yeah. But it's also like for me growing up the way I did, it's also not like learning to not be afraid of money. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I grew up. Like not a, letting it have power over you. Yeah, like I grew up and it's something I still work through. I, I grew up with with a scarcity mentality around money, mm -hmm. and any time, and, and I tr I believe this like w with scarcity comes abuse. Mm -hmm. So like anytime you have a scarcity mentality around something, you 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 tend to abuse it. So uh, in one way or another, right? Like so you can either abuse it in like a very hoarding type of a way, yeah, or you can abuse it in a very spending type of a way, yeah, right? So. Like with money specifically, growing up with like this never having enough, we will never have enough, we're always going to be in this mentality. When I started to make money, to me, like I was like, I'm going to go get everything I've always wanted mm -hmm. because what if I don't have it? What if I don't have the opportunity to get it ever again? Yeah. Right? You missed your chance. I missed my chance. Mm -hmm. Not coming from the place of abundance where mm -hmm. I'll probably find a way to be financially successful for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to wait. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, and I, that's one of the things that I really want to teach our kids is mm -hmm. like the psychology behind money. Absolutely. Like, not just like you should save, but like why you should treat money in this manner mm -hmm. so that it doesn't have power over you. Correct. Yeah. I like the idea of saying like, we're not going to let it have power over us because like anything, it's never about the thing. You know, why do people like spending money? Because there's a dopamine rush that comes from it. Well, why do we feel like we need a dopamine rush? And and what does it feel like to sit with our feeling when we don't have a dopamine rush? All of society is a dopamine rush these days. It's social media. It's watching TV. It's buying something new. It's getting likes on your Instagram post. I think if there's – you know, obviously I think teaching financial – Metrics is going to be critical, but stepping, making a step deeper into the side of sitting with our feelings, teaching those things, I think that's going to be critically valuable. Yeah. No, I, I, I just wanted to kind of bring that up too because it, it all kind of comes together, right? The great balancing act as we started this conversation yeah. with is like if you can get a handle on uh, – the feelings and the emotions and the triggers behind a lot of these decisions, yeah. Which whichever side of the equation you're on, right? Like, um, then you'll be able to make clearer and more impactful decisions. So, mm -hmm. like, like we said earlier, when we first switched the business, I I had to make intentional decisions to neglect my kids to go mm -hmm. build a business. Which now today I get the opportunity to make intentional decisions to pour more into their kids. Mm -hmm. 
on the money, the money side. You get to make intentional decisions around your money. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't happen to you. It happens with you. Mm-hmm. Um, you it's the biggest lie that people believe. Yeah, but you get the, these decisions. When they think and, they like, don't have control. I have a friend who's been going through some some difficult situations, and he's always like, why is this happening to me? Why, mm. why, why me? Why does this keep happening to me? And I'm like, hey, man, it's not like, first off, like, you've been uniquely chosen to deal with these problems. And they're on your plate because you have the capacities and they're on your plate because either you have the capacities or you need to grow in your capacities. Mm -hmm. That's why they're there. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, like that mentality will never get you out of that problem. Yeah, absolutely. Right. But I think the, the, the triggers behind these decisions is really where it really comes down Mm -hmm. to the balancing act because balance doesn't come by accident. Mm -hmm. It it comes by intention. Mm -hmm. And understanding that the process of going through those intentions is the balancing act. Because as you said, when we first started, there is no, there is no destination. There is, yeah. There's it's the, a, it's, it's a pure journey process of making intentional decisions. And there's going to be seasons in life where you will be more intentional in one aspect or another. And as long as those are decisions you are making for yourself, that's all that matters. Because mm-hmm. if you're not making those decisions, it's being made for you. And yeah. that's where you truly lose yeah. the balance. And I think setting the example is important. Also, like you've bought books for, for more so for Coco than, than Senna and Winnie at this point. But just talking about money, like something that we did in the beginning of the year is we started writing our list of all – this. I don't want to cry when I say this – all the things that we want our kids to know before they leave the house. And it's everything – you know, tangible things like how to do the laundry, learning to how to do taxes, all of setting a budget, <laughs> maybe how to do a mortgage. We haven't added that on there. But all those things that ideally we can prepare our kids to know in the world. Um, and I think there's a lot of different ways to go about that. But like reading books, like but even like when we were shopping yesterday, you said something really wise to Coco that it was something stupid. Like she just wanted to buy something in a store and you were like – you said something like, hey, you know, you don't have to buy something every time and and why do you want to do that? And I think that question was more valuable than anything because you didn't just say no. You didn't shame her and make her feel bad for wanting something, but you posed a question. And I think giving our kids tools to think through things and be more methodical about how they want to live their life is the, the bigger piece. Yeah. No, and again, it goes back to like we made an intentional decision – to put a list together. Yeah. Because the last thing you want is to, you know, the kids are leaving for college and you're like, man, I wish I would have. Yeah. Right? And maybe we get to the entire list, maybe we don't. Um, But at least we are putting an intentional effort towards building something. Something else I want to shift back to was um, with connecting and being vulnerable with your spouse, especially from the entrepreneur to the stay-at-home spouse. Being overly communicative about where you're at, like something that we had talked about recently, and it it is a vulnerable thing, but being vulnerable, let's say you have a bad month or a bad quarter or something with your spouse, I think coming alongside them and being willing to be vulnerable and say, hey, this was a bad quarter. This is how the business is going to walk through this. This is This is our plan that's going to impact your spouse's spending because let's say, for example, you don't communicate that and then they're going on their merry way and they're, I don't know, splurging on outdoor furniture or, you know, doing something. And then you get resentful. And then you get resentful or you blow up at them or, you know, and and the spouse that stays home is just like, wait a minute, like I thought we were, I thought we were doing this over here or, you know, whatever. I think when you're on the same page about the business, one person feels less frivolous or whatever. And even holding each other accountable. Like, let's say you came back to me and you're like, oh, my gosh, there's this great car available. I'm not saying this is happening. I'm just saying this could happen in our world. Um, And, you know, then I'm able to be a better helpmate to you and say, hey, I thought this was our plan for the business and this is our plan for our home life. Um, Then I'm an asset to you and I am investing in the business and I am investing in our financial plan. And I think that – aligns everyone with purpose towards the same goal. And coming back to the purposes is just so critical. Yeah. It's inspiring me. I, we didn't get to do our Monday morning meeting this week, and now I just want to go have it after this conversation. No, we got one scheduled for Monday. Okay. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. 
Well, guys, again, total pivot, but I think this is the sort of stuff that's really important. Like it doesn't get talked about enough. It doesn't get romanticized enough because it's not fun, but it's the work that needs to be put in to to continue to grow, right? Like um, what's the point of growing a business if you can't be happy at home? Yeah. So uh, with that being said, thank you guys for being a part of our show today. Don't forget to rate, like, subscribe, give us some feedback. Give some shout outs to the original MG over here. Um, you can find me at Melissa Grace Designs or www.melissagracedesigns.com. Yep. Give her some love uh, and appreciate you guys being part of our show. See ya.